Hi, my name is Wayne Meyer, and I'm a senior software engineer with the Strategic Initiatives Group here at Avalara. I am also coming to you today from my sailboat on beautiful Puget Sound outside Seattle. Building off of Rahul's earlier SDK example, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Avatax to perform duty calculations and assist in your international e-commerce efforts. The agenda for our session today is going to be a cross-border introduction and some necessary terminology so that we all are on the same page with the vocabulary. We're going to get into transaction prerequisites when dealing with cross-border transactions. Then we'll get into a variety of duty calculation code examples. And finally, I hope to leave five to 10 minutes at the end of the session for any questions you may have. <clears throat> Let's start with some basic terminology that is critical to creating cross-border calculations. This vocabulary is broadly applicable to international commerce. I'm going to keep this primer material as rudimentary as possible. There's going to be some oversimplifications for ease of discussion. We could easily use this entire session just on vocabulary. It's that deep. So customs duty, tariffs, import taxes. We often hear these together. What's the difference? When shipping physical goods across national borders, many of these goods are subject to duties and tariffs. For the sake of discussion, we can use the terms duties, tariffs, customs duty, and import tax interchangeably. There are legal differences, but these all calculate to an amount owed to a customs authority before the product can be released into the destination country. Now we'll get into some cross-border transaction prerequisites. For starters, similar to the previous examples, you're going to need to declare customs duty nexus. This is similar to VAT GST nexus or US nexus. You are declaring that you have a legal obligation to collect on behalf of your buyer. We mentioned physical goods. That physical goods part is important. Under the harmonized system, digital products and services are not subject to duties. The harmonized system, or HS for short, is a standard for classifying those physical goods when shipped across international borders. From an engineering standpoint, HS is a hierarchical lexical data structure describing physical goods that are shipped across national borders. The first six digits are the same for all countries, but this six digit HS code in this example, 620520, while internationally standardized, that six digit code is inaccurate and insufficient for most products. Here, we see the HS code for a men's cotton dress shirt shipped to Japan. Below that is the hierarchical information in a JSON representation within Avatax, the descriptive hierarchical lexical information. Now, let's take a look at the same cotton dress shirt shipped into the US. HS code is longer, and notice that there's more hierarchical information in the JSON representation. The key takeaway here is that HS codes are unique to the destination country. It could be the same HS code, but it might not necessarily represent the exact same item. How do I get these HS codes? You're going to need the HS code to ship items into other countries. Avalara has an item classification service available as an API or via secure FTP using Google's product file format, which you may already be using. This is an automated service 
through which you can supply Avalara metadata about physical goods in your catalog, and we return to you a customs grade HS code for your destination countries that you choose. By coupling machine learning with domain expert human review, we are able to provide you HS codes at a very cost-effective price point. Demonstrating this today is outside the scope of my time slot, but you may request a demonstration of item classification through your Avalara account manager. I promise, this is the last bit of vocabulary before we get to the code examples. Who pays the duties? In business speak, this requirement is going to be what is the best experience for your customers? Delivery at place or DAP. This also used to be called delivered duties unpaid or DDU. And sometimes you'll still see that term, but that has been legally deprecated. DAP is a situation when you ship items without remitting duties on behalf of your buyer. The buyer may owe duties in VAT before their item is released from customs. This can result in unpleasant surprises for your customers and rejected shipments for your company. The other international commerce term, before we jump into code examples, is DDP, delivered duties paid. This is the ideal customer experience. You calculate duties, inform your customer of those duties at the time of checkout and remit duties on their behalf. Order arrives to your customer without additional billing from their customs authority. This most closely relates to the domestic e-commerce purchasing experience. And this is also our best guidance. There are a few more relevant terms for cross-border transactions, but it's gonna be easier to just use code examples and jump right in. Here I'm using the avatax.net SDK and my language of choice is C Sharp. We also produce SDKs for avatax in JavaScript, Java, PHP, Ruby, and Python. The SDKs are maintained in lockstep with the Avatax REST API. Therefore, the Avatax SDKs will always have the latest functionality that is present within the API. Here, we see I've included the Avatax REST client and similar to Rahul's example, I instantiate the client. And now I'm going to use the transaction builder to start a transaction to ship from Spain to Japan. Because I wanna add the HS code, I'm going to need to manually get hold, in, manually instantiate the line item model. And here we're going to ship our men's cotton dress shirt from Spain to Japan. It's a very nice shirt, it's a thousand dollars. And I'm going to use DAP, delivery at place, to ship this shirt. In creating a transaction with the SDK and with Avatax, that field is, is seller importer of record. What you're saying here is, is the person selling this, you, the importer of record, therefore legally responsible for remitting taxes and duties on this transaction? <clears throat> so let's fire off this request. and take a look at our response. Because this was shipped DAP, and we did include an HS code, and we also have Nexus in Japan, Avatax detected that this was a cross-border transaction, and the buyer 
will owe $74 in import duty and $107.40 of VAT. This was not described to your customer at checkout. So this is potentially a surprise that your customer is going to have when their order arrives. This DAP transaction is the easiest path for you as an engineer. It's going to be the easiest to implement, but this diminishes the customer experience when their shipment arrives with taxes and duties still owed. So now, let's deeply discount our men's cotton dress shirt to Japan, but this time, we're going to say that we are the seller of, we are the importer of record. This equates to shipping delivered duties paid, DDP, from the vocabulary. Let me execute this request. And we'll take a look at what we got back. Now we run into another term here. This does not meet de minimis. De minimis is a legal term. In this context, it means too trivial to consider. This $10 shirt is below Japan's de minimis threshold for duty consideration. Therefore, Japan's customs authority doesn't want to bother with a declaration or duties on this order. Avatax has identified that this is below de minimis. It even tells you 1,000 Japanese yen is a de minimis threshold, or $96. Uh, and this currency conversion is handled within Avatax, and we update those rates daily. Now let's see what happens when we calculate for our original $1,000 dress shirt. It's the same cotton dress shirt. And we are still shipping DDP, delivered duties paid. We are the importer of record. We execute this code. And now we've met the Japan De minimis threshold, Avatax identifies that duty does apply. It gives us an import duty calculation, a VAT calculation, and the total taxes. We can report this to the buyer at the time of checkout. And they'll see that they are now paying $181.40 total taxes. You're able to itemize the duty and VAT for your buyer. Delivered duty paid, DDP, is the ideal customer experience, and this is our best practices guidance. By setting the nexus, by setting your nexus, the HS code, and the amount, Avatax will automatically calculate duties so that you and your customer know the complete total of your order. This complete shipping total can result in less rejected shipments and a more domestic-like e-commerce experience. Well, wait a minute. What happens if that HS code isn't valid? So we're still shipping Spain to Japan, $1,000. And I'm, here I've used a deliberately incorrect HS code. We'll send this request. The default behavior of Avatax is to always get you a calculation with the available information in the request. In this case, Avatax was able to perform a VAT calculation. <clears throat> and the VAT for this transaction, for this $1,000 shirt, comes up to $100. But we don't see duties. An incorrect HS code is the absolute most common reason why we see a lack of duty calculation in customers' transactions. A future functionality coming in Avatax will to, be, to provide 
a message identifying that the HS code is incorrect for the country you've chosen. Okay, moving on. We're gonna change it up a little bit. Now we're shipping from Japan to Switzerland. And what I'm going to demonstrate here is item parameters. We're still using our really fancy dress shirt and we're using an HS code for men's cotton dress shirt. But we've left off the parameters. Switzerland requires a net weight parameter on all physical shipments into the country. And what will happen here is we actually get an Avatax error. An exception is thrown. And if we look, dig into this, we look at the error message. And Avatax will tell us that there is a missing attribute. Attributes required for this transaction, but could not be located in the parameter bag item. And let's show you that exception was thrown. <clears throat> but if we include the parameter, when we instantiate our line item model, and initialize it, we also instantiate the parameters list collection. Then we instantiate and initialize a parameter light on a model. From experience or from that Avatax exception, we know that we need to include net weight. So here, I've instantiated and initialized a transaction line parameter, net weight, this shirt is 75 grams. I add it to the line parameter collection and send our request. And now we get our Switzerland duty calculation, a message that de minimis has been met, duty is applicable, and there is an applicable import duty, applicable VAT, for a total of $77.18. All available parameters and units of measurement can be found within the Avatax definitions endpoints. That concludes our code examples for performing duty calculations. We've seen how a valid HS code in combination with Nexus and the create transaction logic, you can obtain duty calculations with your existing Avatax integration. We have also demonstrated the most common pitfalls of performing duty calculations. Missing HS code, bad HS code. With Avatax cross-border, you can empower your team to serve customers across national borders and provide a better end-to-end -end experience for your international customers. Now, let's open up the session to questions.